Good evening, everyone. We will now reconvene at 7.03. Welcome. I would first like to begin by recognizing our past president of the last year, Mrs. Vicki Morgan. She has always done a fantastic job serving on the board for many, many, many years. But I would like to recognize her for giving her the gavel. I don't know how many that is for her, but I'm sure it's many, many gavels and many more to come. <laughs> well, uh, board president, I'm going to turn it over to Michael Holt in just a second. He's the assistant director of fine arts for our next special recognition, and he'll introduce some fine students and their directors, um, and then we'll make sure we give them their certificates. But if there are people in the hallway that are here to see the Pastia Memorial High School program, their directors for competing at the Color Guard, or at the high school indoor drum line, we might need to make room for them so they don't miss their students. So just, just in case we're looking at recognizing Pasadena Memorial High School band program for both the color guard and the outstanding drum line, this is the time to come in and squeeze in and find a spot or trade out with someone who's not here for that event. Let me turn it over to Mr. Holt now. Thank you, Dr. Powell and, the, and school board members for the opportunity tonight to recognize these outstanding students from Memorial High School band for competing in the Texas State um, Color Guard Circuit Contest. We would have recognized them in May, but they had a band concert that night. Okay. Our first group is the Pasadena Memorial High School Color Guard under the direction of Jason Harvey, Mark Walden, and Gustavo Chicabo. The guard advanced to the state competition, which, which took place in April. Um, April 7th at Texas A&M's Reed Arena where they placed 8th in the whole state um, for Scholastic 8 class. Okay, those members are Alondra Avila. <laughs> Bianca Batusta. <laughs> Jalissa Facunda. <laughs> Facundo, excuse me. Marissa Guerrero. Destiny Hayes, <laughs> Tiffany Huerta, Hui <laughs> Win, Kimberly Oliveris, <laughs> Jocelyn Rodriguez, <laughs> Norris <laughs> Thatch, <laughs> Natalie Torres, <laughs> Vanessa Villegas, <laughs> and Ashley Williamson. One more round of applause for all these outstanding performers. Okay. And then our second group tonight is the Pasadena Memorial Indoor Drumline under the direction of Mark Walton, Jason Harvey, Jamie Kolar, Josh Croker, and Emily Jones. The drumline competed in the Texas State Color Guard Circuit Championship on April 14th at, again, Reed Arena on the campus of Texas A&M University. The drumline competes in Scholastic World Class, the highest nationally recognized classification that a, that a school can compete in. The drumline won first place, earning gold medals. <laughs> so the members of the drumline are Daniel Nucio, Philip Rodriguez, Zeke Fuentes, Sebastian Nino, Cole Johnson, Carolyn Martino, Nick Moreno, Colby No, Abel Alfaro, Marvin Alfaro, Nina Contreras, Nick Flores, Sean Robbins, 
Sergio Salazar, Autumn Cruz, Brenda De Hoyos, Andres Guzman, Romeo Ramirez, Isaac Freyer, Alonzo Guadalarama, Rosendo Guajardo, Nathan Lacerio, Felix No, Ruben Gadahara, Andre Gonzalez, Melanie Balderas, Kevin De Hoyos, and Alex Gonzalez. Can I also ask if there are, can I also ask if there's parents here in the audience? Can you stand to be recognized along with school administration from Pasadena Memorial High School? Thank you so much. have another outstanding student to recognize board members. I'm going to bring Amber McNeish to the podium, our PE and health coordinator. So she'll say a few words about the award that we're about to give. Hi, good evening. So I'm here to give a Get Fit Jog Award. And for those of you who aren't quite clear about what Get Fit Jog is, this year we celebrated our 40th anniversary of Get Fit Jog. It's a jogging club that all of our elementary and middle school campuses host. The kiddos that are involved in Get Fit Jog have to log 40 miles running on their campus in order to be even invited to participate in Get Fit Jog. And like I said before, we celebrated our 40th anniversary, but we also had a first. We had a first four-time first place finisher. So I think we have a cross-country runner in the making for sure. And so I'd like to introduce you to former Lomax um, middle school student, Angel Reyes. Four years in a row. Let's hear it for him. That'll be a hard act to follow. We've next uh, have Kyle Knight. He's from the campaign team for student series for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, Pennies for Patients. So Mr. Knight is here and will make a presentation. Sorry, I'm a little short. I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the board, and thank you, everybody, um, for allowing me to speak here tonight on behalf of both the Student Series team for the Texas Gulf Coast chapter um, and on behalf of me personally as somebody that's been affected um, and had a grandfather pass away from a blood cancer. Um, so just as a brief introduction, my name is Kyle Knight, and I work with the Student Series team um, at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society on a coin-based philanthropy project um, known as Pennies for Patients, um, sometimes called Collect for Cures for our high school programs. Now, as we all know, Hurricane Harvey was really devastating for the Pasadena area. Um, I was just speaking to a principal and kind of chatting with her about the fact that one of my college roommates is still recovering and having his home rebuilt um, from the storm and so that is the hard reality um, but despite that I'm just extremely proud personally of the contributions your students in this district were able to make um, because we had over 41 campuses um, in Pasadena ISD contribute to the pennies for patients campaign um, this year so I would just like to give a round of applause to the students first and foremost for that.
And just to kind of let you know what that means, um, basically from contributions like that, we were actually able to provide about $800,000 in relief to patients that were affected, not just by their ailments, but by Hurricane Harvey as well. Um, meaning that there was a particular patient up in Humble ISD. Um, he was actually able to receive funding that not only allowed his family to recover from Hurricane Harvey, but also helped him recover medications that were lost in the floodwaters. So we as an organization had to evolve a little bit. And I think it's great that Pasadena ISD has been on board with us um, with that. So um, on behalf of our organization, Organization, I do have a few people that I want to recognize. Um, Dr. Powell, um, of course, for her leadership in the district and for allowing programs like this to flourish. Um, you might have remembered a bouquet of red um, balloons um, that we dropped by. Um, all that to say that just like those balloons, you lift our spirits at OLS for your leadership. So we thank you for that. Um, and then also two very special volunteers. Um, one of them I will call it very shortly. I'm from Malila Middle School. Um, Malila Middle School did an amazing thing and led the charge with those 41 campuses and raised the most in the district. So Ms. Jacqueline Carmona, the guidance counselor, did an outstanding job as our primary volunteer. Um, but I would also like to introduce an award. Um, I like to call it our Making a World of Difference Award. Um, this goes to volunteers that just go above and beyond the call of duty and lead their campuses um, in difficult circumstances for our patients. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Ms. Diane Wheeler, um, the recipient of this award from Malillo Middle School. members, I don't know if you remember this, but Melillo Middle School also heads our Komen fundraising. They're a very giving campus, and I have a sneaking suspicion it has a lot to do with the leadership and, of course, the parents and community out there. So thank you. It's now time to have our PISD police captain, David Garza, to come up. He's the president of the Pasadena ISD Police Officers Association, and y'all do not look like Captain Garza. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. They're going to introduce the PISD scholarship winners Woo! for the Pasadena Officers Association. Good evening. My name is Jason Grice, and I'd like to welcome you here to the board meeting tonight. On behalf of the Pasadena ISD Police Officers Association, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Deanne Powell as, long, as well as the board for their continued support of our program. Tonight is the culmination of several months of hard work for our, for our association. As some of you may know, we, we have an annual car show which we conduct at Memorial Stadium where we fund our scholarship program. This year, due to inclement weather, didn't get the turnout we wanted, but with the help and support of our sponsors and the community, we're still able to give away 12 $1,000 scholarships to graduating seniors. We're also able to give a $1,000 scholarship, or I'm sorry, a $1,000 donation to the Education Foundation. It is with great pleasure that we now introduce our recipients along with our sponsors. First recipient who was unable to make it is Eloy Anthony Hernandez. He's a Deer Park senior and graduate. Our second uh, second recipient is uh, a Sam Rayburn graduate, Angela Olvera. Uh, <laughs> our third recipient is Don Kreider from Pasadena High School, and I also have Jody Chinlo from Bayway Automotive Group here to... She has. Our third recipient is Jordan Garza, who is not able to, to make it tonight. And she obtained the Russell family scholarship. Third is the KRW scholarship and it's an Angeli Igurin. Unfortunately KRW is a law firm out of Austin who is not able to make it. Our next recipient is Skin Essentials Med Spa and it's Avery Zico Giannis from Pasadena Memorial High School. Okay. 
Our next is Melody Cisneros from South Houston High School with the Mac Ford Scholarship. <laughs> Our next is Jake Miller from Pasadena Memorial along with Jeff White from San Jacinto Harley Davidson here to present the scholarship. Next, we have Cecilia Torres from Dobie receiving the Crawfish Pot Scholarship. <laughs> Next, we have Luis Perez from Dobie receiving the Ace Industrial Scholarship. <laughs> Next, we have Jasmine Foss, a Deer Park graduate, receiving the EOG Resources Scholarship presented by Michelle Russell. And last, we have Brady Chant from Pasadena Memorial High receiving the H-Town Camaro Club and Eric Birch presenting. Again, we'd like to thank everyone that participated in our car show. It's a tremendous success, as you can tell. Twelve $1,000 scholarships to graduating seniors that deserve it. Thank you so much. some awesome opportunities to see some great students and now we're going to get to see some great volunteers board members we're going to recognize tonight the district outstanding volunteer award recipients and we are blessed to have so many that support us in this district from our community and our parents and other volunteers so we're going to start with the outstanding adult volunteer for elementary so I'm going to ask that Elizabeth Reyes come stand up here while I read just a few nice things about Elizabeth where's it come on up I promise I'll try to keep it brief, but you did a lot of great things. So she was nominated by Golden Acres as Outstanding Adult Volunteer. They say that Elizabeth embodies the true meaning of volunteer. She is caring, she's selfless, she's nurturing, and she has the willingness to serve not only the school, but the district as a parent ambassador. She demonstrates a positive attitude and has a, a unique ability to build and foster relationships that empower children and parents to serve in the school as well. Our students and our teachers know her by her acts of service. She's reliable. She has a true servant's heart. She drops everything to help anytime they ask. She'll do anything from set up an event to take out the trash. So that's pretty awesome. She does everything without expecting anything in return. Mrs. Elizabeth truly understands the value and impact that a person can have on a child's life. And she presented parenting classes across the district and various schools. She was committing her time and her efforts to learning and giving back to our school and our district. So please join me in congratulating Elizabeth Reyes, our District Outstanding Adult Volunteer of the Year for Elementary. I'm going to ask Belinda and Pedro Calvillo to come up and join up at the front. There are secondary adult volunteers. Here is a wonderful couple. They were nominated by Rick Snyder Middle School. They say that Mr. and Mrs. Calvillo have been a part of the school family for the past two years, and they have lent a helping hand, how appropriate, for every event as well as for the Spartan Band. At any given school event, you're gonna see the Calvillos smiling and greeting people serving food, setting up and restocking supplies, helping with teacher appreciation, or any other parent committee event. They're both positive, polite people who have contagious smiles, and we see that tonight. To top it off, they're both working parents with full-time careers, so they go out of their way when duty calls to be part of their child's life. Without parents like them, we would not be able to do so much in the band program here at Snyder, and it would not be as nearly successful as we have been. Their dedication and support is very much appreciated. Let's give them a round of applause, Belinda and Pedro Cavillo. Oh, 
and their future South Houston Intermediate <laughs> parents, according to the South Houston <laughs> Intermediate principal. Very good. Already working that out. So we have an outstanding student volunteer for college, and I'll probably mess this up. Rutmera, is that even close? Did I do good? Sort of, kind of? Uh, Mateo, she has been nominated by Parks Elementary as the district's outstanding college student volunteer. She attends San Jack. She volunteers her time to come and help students with their reading. Thank you so much. She participates in host every Friday. The students enjoy her company, her dedication, her understanding, and her empathy. Every time she comes to park, she's polite. She greets everyone with a smile and dedicates her time to make sure students are being successful. She has volunteered for help with the fall festival, daddy and daughter dance, and she goes above and beyond to make the families welcome and engaged in the events. Our scholars, our parents and community are familiar with Rutmera and they support that she provides the campus. Parks Elementary loves to have college students helping their students succeed. So help me in congratulating Mrs. M Ms. Mateo and her Outstanding Student Volunteer for College Award. All right, we have also our outstanding small business volunteer. So we have from South Belt Area Progressive Insurance, we have Kevin Francis, and we also have Civilio, and I'm messing that up too, probably, Termini. Is that right? Did I get it even close? Oh, darn it. <laughs> Thank you very much. They're being nominated because of all their outstanding volunteer work at Freeman Elementary. They have begun collecting and contributing to school supplies. They also have worked help in the recovery from Harvey with all their donated supplies for families. In October, they helped with the family night trick-or-treat trail by greeting families. And, of course, in helping teach our students about Earth Day and the importance of plants in our environment. So we want to thank them. We're grateful for their personal donations of time, school supplies, plants, and items to meet the needs of our families and the staff at Progressive Insurance has provided to Freeman Elementary. So help me in congratulating Progressive Insurance and the staff there for being selected as the district's Outstanding Small Business Volunteer of the Year. And then we have our Outstanding Large Corporation Volunteer. They were nominated by Golden Acres, but are no stranger to anyone in here in Pasadena ISD. We have our Gulf Coast Educators Federal Credit Union and our CEO, Linda Lukacheski, is here. The Golden Acres says that they have been essential as part of the host program for 25 years. Gulf Coast Educators gives their, hi, hello ma'am. They give their community uh, through service and volunteer work so much. We're fortunate that they have chosen our campus to mentor students through host. They have mentored approximately 125 students at Golden Acres over the years and have served over 1,400 hours. In addition, they support the campus under the leadership of Linda by contributing countless district departments and other campuses throughout our district as a donor including our Education Foundation. So it's for this reason and many, many more that we nominate and award Gulf Coast Educators Federal Credit Union our district's Outstanding Large Business Volunteer of the Year. And last but not least, we have Genoa Elementary who nominated Genoa United Methodist Church as the Outstanding Organization Volunteer of the Year, and I believe we have Pastor Bruce Howard and his wife, Juliana Howard, here. If y'all wanna come forward. They have been a part of Genoa Elementary, and we are grateful that they have been dedicating 33 hours for the host program this year. They've also been participating in the program for over 25 years, the church has. Another wonderful thing that Pastor Bruce Howard and his wife have done is the Good News Club for our children. The students enjoy time with friends as they socialize and interact in a positive way. The Good News Club meets every Thursday with the help of our music teacher, Ms. Parrish, and the Genoa United Methodist Church has been instrumental in helping our families in need by providing necessary items. Please congratulate Pastor Bruce Howard and his wife of Genoa United Methodist Church upon the selection of the district's Outstanding Organization Volunteer of the Year.
And I won't spend too much time on this, but we had Estrella Zavala as our outstanding student volunteer for elementary. She was nominated by Pearl Hall and could not be here tonight, but her fourth grade teacher writes this. She's a responsible, excellent student, both in the classroom and community, and she's a great asset, always happy to help others. So we're sorry she wasn't here tonight, but we'll recognize Estrella Zavala at another time. And I believe that is all we have for special recognition, but what a great night. It's always the best part. Yes. All right, well, that'll take us to section three of the agenda, consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Yeah. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Mr. Roberts. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Section four, personnel section. Consideration and possible approval of administration personnel. Madam President, I move that we approve addenda pages A through O. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Mr. Kendrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to introduce these lucky people that are coming to our district and transferring in our district. Uh, first is Nayeli Carmona. Is Nayeli here? Hi, Nayeli. <laughs> Nayeli has been named counselor for South Houston Intermediate for the 2018-19 school year. Congratulations and welcome to PISD. you have family with you? <laughs> well, introducing. Hi, Liam. <laughs> Next is Danielle Real. Real? I'm sorry. We took a vote on that. We lost. <laughs> He's, he's the one that's responsible. No, I'm the one that was right. <laughs> <laughs> Danielle, welcome to Pasadena. Uh, Danielle has been named counselor Pasadena High School for the 2018-19 school year. And do you have family with you? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, I drove in from San Angelo for the meeting, and I brought wow. my friend Marta. But she's, awesome. So she's hiding over there because she's more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> have the right color on though. <laughs> okay. Next is Jacqueline Trejo. Is hi Jacqueline. Jacqueline has been named counselor for Jackson Intermediate for the 2018-19 school year. Did you bring family with you? Good. Oh. Next is Jessica Jacqueline Ariano. Is it Jessica? You go by Jessica or Jacqueline? Jessica. Okay, Jessica um, has been named Educational Diagnostician for the 2018-19 school year. And do you have family with you? Good, good. Congratulations. Welcome to Pasadena. And next is Orlando Ariano. <laughs> and I need not ask, do you have family with you? Congratulations, Orlando has been named Educational Diagnostician for the 2018-19 school year. Congratulations. <laughs> and welcome both of you to Pasadena. Next is Tanise Collins. Okay, Tanise. Uh, Tanise has been named Licensed Specialist in School Psychology for the 2018-19 school year. Congratulations. Do you have family with you? My beautiful daughter and my cousin. Good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Congratulations. And again, welcome to Pasadena. Next is Thelma Jimenez. Is Thelma here? Thelma has been named uh, Educational Diagnostician again for the 2018-19 school year. Congratulations. And do you have family? I see you do. My kids, my husband, and like Tom Brody's family back there. Awesome. Awesome. Congratulations. Ronesha Lachey Julius is not with us tonight, but she's also been named licensed specialist in school psychology for this next school year, and we certainly wish her well in her endeavors. Sarah Elizabeth Prater. Sarah has been named a licensed specialist in school psychology, and we say congratulations and welcome to Pasadena ISD. Family with you? Okay, well, good. We're our, we're your family now. <laughs> okay, Chris, Christopher Rojas. Christopher has been named assistant principal at San Jacinto Intermediate School for the 2018 school year. Christopher, did you bring family with you? Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> Erica Salazar. Hi, Erica. Erica has been named assistant principal at Keller Middle School for the 2018-19 school year. Congratulations. <laughs> I know you have school family. Do you have your personal family here as well? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Elizabeth Ferguson. Is Eliz Elizabeth has been named assistant principal at Sam Rayburn High School for the 2018-19 school year. Congratulations. <laughs> Did you bring family with you? assistant principal at Sam Rayburn High School. Congratulations. <laughs> Do you have family other than Sam Rayburn family with you? I have all of my C&I family. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Dan Hoppy is Dan here there he is in the back hi Dan Dan has been approved for the position of executive director uh, executive director for curriculum and instruction uh, for the 2018-19 school year Congratulations. I see you have family Melissa Aaron McCullough. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa has been named Executive Director for Curriculum and Instruction Connect Program, near and dear to my heart. <laughs> do you have family with you? I do. I have my daughter, Charlotte, which is very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Congratulations. And Madam President, that is all of our um, personnel for this evening. Wonderful. Well, congratulations to all of you. We are all very happy and excited for you. And if you would like to retreat at this time, you're more than welcome to do so, or you're more than welcome to stay. It's up to you. <laughs> Sister doing? How are you? All my sisters are doing. Good. And you're doing well. Yes. Wow. 
Item number two, consideration and possible approval of the midpoint salary increases for the 2018-19 school year. So move. Second. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Mr. Roberts. Any discussion? Board members, I'm not sure if you want me to do the budget update first before we vote on those two items. It's in the financial section. If you want, I can move that up. If you, It's up to you. Oh, we said we were going to re yeah. motion in a second. Okay, then we'll just keep going and then we can. Okay. I can get that during the financial section. It's totally up to Any you. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number three discussion and possible action on additional personnel and other payroll increases for the 2018 19 school year. So move. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, a consideration and possible approval of the amendment to a superintendent's contract and related actions. So move. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? I just want to say I believe we have the best superintendent in the state of Texas. Very kind. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion he carries. Mr. Kendrick leaned over and said, we'll keep you another six months. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number five, certified personnel for the 2018-19 school year and support personnel for the 2018-19 uh, school year. Section five is the educational section. Item number one, consideration and possible approval of the Pasadena ISD alternative requirement to award diplomas for individuals who entered grade nine before 2011-2012 school year. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? She's asking if it'll be a different diploma. Will you talk a little, just briefly, on the process? Um, these are our TOS and TAX students rather than our STAR students. Good evening, Lord. Um, Ms. Sullivan, basically, uh, what this is uh, an opportunity for our students that never passed the TAX test. The TAX test has been dissolved, so it no longer exists. Uh, the state gave five ways that a student could get a diploma. What we're asking here tonight is a local decision of how to help our students that can't qualify in the five ways that the state has allowed them to um, get a diploma. And so what we're doing is um, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're using our individual graduation committee 
plan that we have and we're going to use it for our tax kids. So basically what will happen is if they don't qualify one of the state ways, they can come up, we'll work with them to show proficiency by doing a, pa a project and they'll be given their diploma. What we will do is order diplomas that will get a diploma for this year. We have one year to complete this uh, task. Well, I guess my question, is it going to be a different diploma? No, ma'am. Uh, basically, the diplomas are all basically look the same, uh, but they will only qual they'll qualify for their uh, recommended or their minimum plan, which they would have been on when they graduate. Right. And, and I but the diploma will be the same. It'll be for their school. And uh, we're just very excited. This is a great opportunity to help some of our students that could barely get through those tests. Always had one more question tested maybe six or seven times and now can maybe get a raise at their job because they'll have a diploma. Do we have 1,500 students that qualify now? We have 1,500 students that qualify. We can't promise that we will find them all. We have a committee that will be working together to uh, post out on Facebook. We have some addresses, but we can't prove that there are still, I mean, some of these students may be 35 years old. So they're not a students that are enrolled in the district at this no, time? No, ma'am. Thank you, Joyce. Okay. Any other questions? Not at all. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number two, consideration and possible approval of the subscription renewal contract with ESC Region 11 for Discovery Education Streaming for the 2018-19 school year. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number three, consideration and possible approval to enter into the 2018-19 interlocal contract agreement between Harris County Department of Education and Pasadena Independent School District for the tuition and educational services at the Academic and Behavioral School East. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? Yes. I have a question. Uh, where is the Academic and Behavioral School East located? Debbie, what's the address? It's off of 610. It's right on the corner of uh, where 610 and 45 come together. By Park Place. It, I'm sorry, yeah. I couldn't hear you. It's by where 610 and 45 come across. It's by Park Place. If you look yes. over to the right. Yes. And then we, uh, of course, furnish transportation to the facility. We do. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number four. We have a presentation. This is a presentation on campus awards for the Intermediate Extreme Reading Challenge. So as Catherine Rarick comes up, I'm going to read this to you board members. This year from September through May, all 10 intermediate schools participated in our third annual Extreme Reading Challenge. This challenge allows students to compete with each other independently as well as with their campus. Every student district-wide who met the goal of 140 AR or accelerated reader points attended a special field day and a picnic on May 24th. The intermediate school with the largest percentage of their overall population reaching 140 AR points will reign as the extreme reading champion for the next school year. And they get a small trophy. Small <laughs> tonight, and a small banner. Yes. Right. So tonight we're here to announce the champion, so I'll turn it over to Catherine. So despite a pretty re uh, delayed start due to Hurricane Harvey, the third year of the Extreme Reading Challenge was a huge success. District-wide, we had over 500 students qualify to attend the field day, which is double the number of students we had the first year. So it's growing every year. Um, of those 500, 85 students were from one particular campus, which is about 13% of their total population. The faculty and staff of this campus worked incredibly hard all year to encourage a culture of literacy and their efforts paid off. 
I'm very proud of them and I expect that they will continue to give other campuses stiff competition in the years to come. The Extreme Reading Challenge Champion for the 2017-2018 school year is Parkview Intermediate. Wow. Item number five, consideration and possible approval of the agreement between Pasadena Independent School District and Memorial Harmon Community Benefit Corporation for Cruz School Based Health Center housed on Cruz Elementary School property. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? I have oh. quick one question. Uh, the last paragraph. During the term of this agreement, siblings of students at the contracted schools that are between the ages of 3 and 21 may also be served at the Cruz School Base Health Center. Have we always had that? Like no, that? that's a new addition. There has been a need in the community for the siblings to have medical care. Currently, we can only serve the children enrolled in the listed schools. The nurse practitioner identified the need and brought it to our attention, and here we are. So is there any requirements that these additionals need to bring? No, they'll still have the same consent process that we have, only it'll go through the office instead of our campuses. And when I asked, will this in any way interfere with our students' ability to be served? They said, absolutely not. They have the resources and facility to serve the siblings as well. And we're going to get that notification out. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, consideration and possible approval of the 2018-19 Memorandum of Understanding between the Pasadena Independent School District and the Harris County Juvenile Board. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, consideration and possible approval to, the con to continue effective September 1st, 2018, participation in the Interlocal Government Records Management Cooperative, coordinated and administered by the Harris County Department of Education. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight is for informational purposes only and safe routes to school. Short presentation. Oh, I think Amber McNeish is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Al Elise. Elise Neff is going to. Sorry about that. That's Elise, okay. you're on. So, good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Chenisi. I work for Harris County Public Health. And this is uh, a colleague, Katie Oseman, with MD Anderson Cancer Center. 
and first of all, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity to allow us to present to you today and to our partners with the school district who have made this opportunity happen for us. So we're gonna just go over very briefly um, the work we're doing here in Pasadena around Safe Routes to School in partnership with many great organizations in the community. Um, Safe Routes to School, for those who don't know this uh, concept, it includes various things, but the purpose overall is to really try to increase physical activity, to try to make sure we, ha we can address safety conditions and issues around our neighborhoods, and improvements to infrastructure such as sidewalks, crosswalks, signage, and so on. And so the things that it includes as a concept are really around engineering, education, enforcement, encouragement, evaluation, and equity, the six E's. Um, and so we at MD Anderson and Harris County Public Health through the Healthy Living Matters Initiative have prioritized this issue because we care about the health, safety of all the children in Pasadena and we think this is a very um, unique and um, proven way to do that. So I'm gonna turn it over to Katie. Okay, so a little bit about the history of what we've been doing. I support an initiative called Healthy Living Matters, and we've been in the community working with schools um, and community partners to see what the barriers to walking or biking to school are. And some of the issues, such as just having a bike rack, were easy things that we could address way back when we first started this initiative. Um, other things we've been doing is providing educational opportunities and training to those who are involved in this effort so that they know why it's important and how they can support the families and children who want want to walk or want to bike to school. So we know that um, the Harris County Public Health has laid the groundwork for the great work in Safe Routes to School in Pasadena. And approximately one year ago, these partners came together to formalize um, the efforts. And so these partners include Harris County Public Health, the City of Pasadena, Healthy Living Matters, Pasadena Community Task Force, and Pasadena Vibrant Community. So the goal of Pasadena Safe Routes to School Partnership are to engage the community to create awareness and support for Safe Routes to School through training and technical assistance to Pasadena ISD teachers and um, teachers and faculty, as well as to provide a forum for community, community members and parents to become involved and to be able to have a forum to provide feedback. Additionally, in the near term, the partnership members came together and um, at this point we are doing the assessments and creating the plan for Safe Routes to School for the city and for the school district. The purpose of a Safe Routes to School plan and the formal plan is to create an actionable guide for implementation of strategies within each of the six E's that Katie mentioned. And this plan will help us get beyond one-off walk to school days and have a robust plan for implementation um, within the district and the city. And again, that's an overview of the plan. We've done some assessment work, including gathering student transportation data, administering a parent perception survey data. The Harris County Public Health Built Environment Unit, which is located here in Pasadena, conducted si sidewalk and neighborhood condition assessments within the school zones. And um, we've also sought public input and developed some recommendations. While we would have loved to be able to focus on every single school within Pasadena ISD due to resource constraints, that hasn't been possible at this point in time. And so we created a criteria to uh, separate schools into tier one and tier two uh, levels. And so the tier one schools have no or limited bus service. And they're also neighborhood schools in which the majority of the children live within a one mile walk to school. At these schools, the Harris County Public Health Built Environment Unit conducted the environmental scans and also the parent perception surveys were administered at these schools. Again, those are the tier one schools. And these schools will have engineering specific recommendations for the city of Pasadena to take into account um, around those school zones. The tier two schools are proximal in distance to the tier one schools. And though they did not receive environmental scans or parent perception surveys, they will still receive recommendations in the plan for encouragement and education. In the future, other schools will be added to the plan as we we're able to do that. And we look forward to working with additional schools who um, express interest. And this is a map of the tier one schools. Um, the parent perception survey was administered um, with our coordinated school health colleagues. And they administered this survey in December of 2017 to parents of fourth graders at all of the tier one schools. There was a 26% response rate across all of the schools. Um, the majority of the students, as I had indicated before, live within a half mile of their school. 
and most of the children have asked for permission to walk or bike to school, although we know from the student transportation data this is not happening. And Harris County Public Health, the Built Environment Unit, as I stated, conducted um, assessments during October through November 2017. And so they worked within the school zones of all of the Tier 1 schools, which was broken up into 345 sidewalk segments. And the high-level results yielded that the areas generally contained sidewalks, although they were in need of repairs and updates. The sidewalks were inaccessible for all, ability, for all abilities. Um, some lacked ADA ramps. They had um, steep slopes or cracks in the sidewalk, making it inaccessible. And then there were incomplete street networks, and so that looks like a sidewalk that is not um, continuous. And so this is an example of one of the street segments. I know the picture is a little bit hard to see, but there are lots of um, segments within the 345 that were assessed that either did not have a sidewalk or a crosswalk led to a dirt patch, which is unacceptable for children walking to school. And so we have received um, a lot of feedback on the environmental scan, um, and I won't go over that at this point. And the general recommendations for the city of Pasadena are to um, install lighting and road-oriented road lighting in, in addition to pedestrian-oriented lighting within the street segments, um, to take steps to complete the street network, including the continuity of sidewalks, to remove sidewalk obstructions and maintain deteriorated sidewalks, and to install ADA ramps at all crosswalks. Additionally, um, exploring signalized crossings at major roads near schools. Some of the next steps include supporting the City of Pasadena in their application to the Houston-Galveston Area Council uh, funding mechanism, which is coming up this summer. And so we are excited to support their application and hope that the school district can be supportive of that too, as that would address all of the engineering recommendations that were created in the plan through the Built Environment Unit, which have been cleared by the City of Pasadena Planning Department. So, um, in short, we have really enjoyed this opportunity to work with the school district, um, and we've worked with some really amazing faculty and staff on the Walk to School Days and know that this plan can be really successful in the future. And our hope is that as many kids as possible have access to a safe route to school and are able to actively get themselves there. At this point, we would welcome any questions or comments on the safe routes to school I have plan. a question. This, been, this has been presented to the city? It hasn't yet. It will be going to the Planning Commission within the next month. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> you have a total change in the atmosphere down there mm -hmm. regarding schools in the city. Hopefully you'll get a good hearing. It's going to cost them some money. It's a good program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine, consideration and possible approval of the partnership between the Pasadena Independent School District and Harris County Public Health for implementation of the Super Small Saver Program. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Sullivan and a second by Mrs. Morgan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10, we have a presentation to provide the School Health Advisory Committee SHAC report for 2017-18. And that is Elise. <laughs> All right, so um, we have our, um, every year we have to report on our shack and what we've done this year, and um, I was given a strict timeline, and I like to talk, so instead of me talking, I made a video. What a year it has been. Even through the solar eclipse, Hurricane Harvey, and the ice storm, we have still accomplished so much. Here is our Pasadena ISD shack year in review. Through the SHAC, the wellness plan was developed and was approved by the board in August of 2017. This year, we began using the Alliance for a Healthier Generation's Healthy Schools program to evaluate the implementation of the wellness policy. 
The assessment is aligned with the School Health Index and is a good tool to not only evaluate how well campuses are implementing the wellness policy, but it also allows you to input an action plan for improvement. This is a required evaluation for each school year. This year, we have established and maintained partnerships with Camp Gladiator, the YMCA, and 24-Hour Fitness. We are excited to continue to have a parent designee from each campus to ensure parent involvement. Through the help of our schools and our parents, we held five successful walk to school days at Ritchie, Red Bluff, Turner, Sparks, and Gardens. And we had one bike to school event at Red Bluff. We had around 1,000 students participate in all of the events. We have successfully completed year one with MD Anderson and Shell Oil for the Pasadena Vibrant Community Initiative. Through the initiative, we have built stronger relationships with community partners who want the best for our students and for their families. The SHAC has continued to support the Excellence and Wellness Ward, promoting coordinated school health on all campuses. We had 25 campuses submit an application for the Excellence in Wellness Award. They will be recognized in August. Through our Child Nutrition Services, digital menu boards were added at all campuses. Mary Harriman was recognized as one of the five winners of the 2018 Breakfast Hero Contest. Former Astros and current San Francisco Giant, Hunter Pence, came to visit Jessup to teach the importance of breakfast and to observe the breakfast in the classroom program. Through hard work, many phone conferences, and pure love for the kids and community, we've built a total of five playgrounds in Pasadena. Gardens, South Houston, and Ritchie Elementary were built through Kaboom and different funding partners. Jessup and Hancock had playgrounds built through Spark Park. Linda Rodriguez accepted the Children's Mental Health Champion Award on behalf of Pasadena ISD and all of the amazing unsung heroes who help our students each and every day. Since 2013, the Texas Department of Agriculture has recognized schools for their efforts to bring local foods and agricultural education to their students. This is the fourth year Pasadena ISD's Child Nutrition Program has been awarded the Texas Department of Agriculture Local Products Challenge Award. The Child Nutrition Department works closely with our vendors to source local items to serve our students and support Texas farmers and manufacturers. A few weeks ago, we learned that our district has been selected as one of five 2018 Shack Award winners. These shacks were chosen using a set of criteria, including the number of active council members, number of participating students and parents, frequencies of meetings, reporting practices, number of issue areas addressed, and accomplishments of the school year. As we begin to look forward to the 2018-19 school year, the shack would like to develop district recess guidelines, recommend a human sexuality curriculum to be implemented in 2019-2020, use the Alliance for Healthier Generation results to drive district level support in coordinated school health, continue to increase physical activity throughout the day in and out of the classroom. Thank you so much for your support and guidance this past year. We look forward to continuing our work in and around Pasadena ISD. Congratulations on the award. That's awesome. Yeah. Item number 11, consideration and possible approval of the authorization to enter into local contracts with the University of Houston for internship and externship students. This agreement would automatically renew annually in July until further notice. That's so move. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, item number 11. Consideration of possible approval of the agreement between Pasadena Independent School District and Memorial Hermann Community Benefit Corporation for WAVE, school-based health center housed on Mathis Elementary School Campus. So Second, whatever. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, item number 13. Consideration of possible approval of the multiple grant awards. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? Just proud of the grant department for all they do for our children and for our community. It was do a great job. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Section six, the student achievements. There's so many and like almost well there's over 10 almost 10 pages there's pentathlon awards there's intermediate band awards for every intermediate school choir high school choir orchestra you name it they're all on those pages section 7 policy update and review we don't have any this board meeting section 8 Financial section, item number one, consideration and possible approval of the budget amendments. I move we approve the budget amendments. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Mr. Roberts. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. When did you want to do that presentation? Okay. Item number two, consideration and possible approval of the designation of investment officers. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And item number three, consideration and possible approval of the resolution establishing criteria for accepting electronic bids or proposals. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Con item number four, consideration and Possible approval of the interlocal contract and resolution with the Central Texas Purchasing Alliance. So moved. Second. Question. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Ms. Selwyn. Yes. Who is the Central Texas Education Alliance? Derek, if you want to come forward. We yeah. needed to get with a co-op. My understanding is to pay the officials. You want to explain that? The CTPA is... Uh, there's probably about a hundred school districts over Texas that are all member of and we share bids so when one school district does a bid it's possible for other school districts to piggyback onto that bid um, but the initial purpose was there's a, a system called arbiter pay that pays sport officials that we're looking mm -hmm. at and this would give us access to that contract so so the terminology Central Texas really doesn't have anything to do no, with it. No, Klein's in it. There's several, so it's kind of grown. It started there. Round Rock ISD is the one that originated it and has grown. I got you. That's all. That's my Thank you, Derek. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, board members, we'll have a budget workshop coming up in July, July 12th, but in the meantime, we just wanted to update you where we're at. The first time you saw the draft one, that was in May, mid-May, and I reminded you that the budget process starts earlier in the year, and of course, once we threw everything in the kitchen sink together, all the requests, whether that was in stuff or personnel or uh, increases in any area, the initial draft was at a $21.6 million deficit. Um, so keep in mind this was assuming the state does nothing to hold us harmless or help us in any way uh, with the students that we lost due to Harvey or no additional state aid will be given related to Harvey impacts. We were then reviewed at that meeting how we were going to whittle down that deficit by reducing department budgets, of course taking out that sick leave payment that we had proposed. The ASCDs did an outstanding job working with John and others in the budget department with instructional staffing reductions, uh, reclassifications, and other new positions that were requested were denied. And then that got us to the draft one that we presented to you on May 15th at about a $10 million deficit. Following that meeting that we last spoke about budget at, we continue to work to reduce the deficit and still provide the high quality of instruction that our 
families have grown accustomed to. So at this time, we'll go ahead and pass out draft two, and you'll see we're currently at an $8.6 million deficit. So we just want to show you this draft, update you where we're at. And of course, the changes in this that Nina's handing to you uh, are highlighted in yellow. Some of the changes, whether that's in revenue or reductions in stuff budgets or other areas, those are highlighted in yellow for your convenience. Um, remember at that meeting, we did address HVAC shortages and costs uh, due to our low salaries at that last meeting. And thanks to you, we've gotten three of those workers back here in the district, valued employees, which has greatly helped. Um, there's still additional pay issues with the other trades, plumbing, electrical, that we need to address or decide upon later. Uh, but I shared at you at the last meeting, my priorities were the 3% raise for all employees, which you just took action on tonight. Um, I also shared at that meeting, my priorities included addressing our bus driver shortage, uh, which bumped them up a pay grade, but also reduced them by three days and you took action on that as well tonight. And I wanna thank you, and I know our transportation folks and Kevin are here to thank you as well for that. They can recruit much better and retain much better with that. We've heard from surrounding districts anywhere from 2% to 5% raises. Um, so again, we're very pleased that you approved 3% tonight. As we all know and have heard, the commission is meeting on school finance. There's been no official recommendations that have come out of that committee. Um, it's, you know, simply a fact that our state legislature is failing public schools at this time and they keep funding us at a very low rate compared to our other states in the country. But regardless, we know that next year we're going to plan like they're going to do nothing for us and we're going to start the year prioritizing those cuts that we know will have to be made for 2019-20 if they do nothing. Thankful to our community for approving the TR TRE earlier this year. We're going to be putting money back into fund balance. Uh, at least over $6 million will go back in. I shared that with you. As well as I've shared with you the exciting news that we're receiving some grant funding from the state that will exceed $10 million to help reimburse us from costs and needs associated with Harvey. And we anticipate those funds will replenish fund balance that had to be utilized in the prior year. So we're committed to looking for ways to cut costs. You're gonna be getting an insurance presentation next uh, regular board meeting about costs there. Uh, we're looking at ways to increase revenue, um, ways that we can help in that area. So again, in the next uh, board meeting on July 12th, we'll go into a lot of detail about where we're at. Um, again, the raises are greatly appreciated. I know all of the staff members here represented, but all the ones that will hear about it through communication through the district will be appreciative as well. So we wanted to give you this information, give you a chance to look at it, ask questions, give us direction as we move further in the process before we ask you to finalize the budget or adopt a budget for 2018-19. So are there questions about this, this draft or any other comments or direction you want to give me at this time or you know you have between now and July 12th to do that as we continue to work on it. I commend you for getting it down where it is at this, at this point. Absolutely. Yes. And planning very for the much. future of 19 I think is a <coughs> very well thought out idea about what would happen if we get no funding. Mm -hmm. That would not be funny. We see what happened to Klein. They didn't pass the PRE. And, and they're doing time. cuts now. And they're going to be doing cuts. HISD is doing cuts. And I'm not too sure all the truth is known about HISD. And keep in mind, anyway. in this draft here, draft two, this $8.6 million, $5 million of that is insurance, additional insurance costs. $5 million of the 8.6. This last budget, we put in 2.5, but we just had a recent conversation that we shortchanged that perhaps in this last budget. So there's actually $5 million in here, um, in including additional costs that we know based on what was just voted on by our insurance committee that will come out of the employee side of that. Uh, but again, that's in the budget at this time. Other questions or thoughts? I'll give you time are, to- Are y'all gonna bring some ideas of how to increase revenue? What, what do y'all 
Well, one is open enrollment. Of course, we started that very late last year, but we're advertising and going at that extremely hard. I had a meeting, and I know Kevin has met with energy management ways to increase revenue by doing some things in those areas. Uh, we've had conversations just recently about things that we can do as far as agreements, perhaps with some of our uh, industry partners like Lyondale. I think y'all have had those conversations in past years. Uh, so yes, we're going to be looking at every possible way we can increase revenue and of course we're going to have to make some tough decisions if the state doesn't step up about what we can live without and ways we can cut costs. And that may be programmatic, that may be teacher ratio, uh, we'll start that laundry list and keep it running, prioritizing it throughout the year. What are we going to do with that today? Well, I mean, that will be one of those discussions that we'll have to have. I know last year when we had it, um, we, we definitely considered, you know, charging for participation in athletics. Never a popular idea because our principals and our coaches worry that it will impact numbers of students that actually show up and put their heart into that. So that, that nothing's off the table. And we'll have to have those discussions. Yeah, what's going on with our contract? Do we still have an active contract? Are we looking at a new contract as far as concessions and so on and so forth? Hmm. I, I can't even answer that right now. I'd have to get with... I uh, wonder where I come up with it. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Have you had a hot dog lately or nachos no, lately? Not there. <laughs> I don't think he has. Uh, if Rupert was here, I could answer that. But I don't see him out there in the audience. Okay. I don't think they take it on in the football games and stuff like that. I don't think there's a vendor. I think it's parents. Derek, you want to come up? The there is a vendor. The football game? There is a vendor? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. Here comes Derek. Baseball and yeah, 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 Pennington Concessions is the vendor we currently yeah, have. Out of or like that. I'm not sure where they're based. Well, that's pretty that's bad. Not. Well, he's at it for years and years and years. <laughs> Sorry. This is my only thought. It, it, uh, we've raised the ticket price on, uh, to be blunt with you, we've raised the ticket price on football games and attendance has gone down. In a marketing scheme of things, you wouldn't raise your tickets to get in the game, you'd raise your cost of buying a soft drink. But what we're doing, we're raising our tickets to get in the game where a, a mom and dad and say two or three little kids it's going to cost them $30 to go to a, a high school football game. Why not lower that cost, take over the concession stand for the, uh, uh, for the soft drinks and so on and so forth and make that money back. That's talking openly. But I don't know where we are on the contract. And we can definitely look at that. I know at one time we were in the red at the stadium as far as yeah. ticket sales and concessions, and it was ugly. Yeah, and we finally have gotten back into the yeah. the gaining funds rather yeah. than the losing. We're only getting a small percentage of the concessions. Of the, uh, concession. and it's not the best you know, I think that um, it's also, Fred, a sign of the times. Oh, people sure. aren't People aren't as involved with their families as they once were. Right. And so I think that probably waning ticket sales has probably more to do with that than it does the cost of the tickets. Now, the ticket, I think the ticket nowadays is $7 a person. So and students you. are less, but yeah, yeah. Right. and I mean, let's face it: you go to Memorial's game and they're packed, but you go to Pasadena's game and you I look at the other off. side and they're 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 yeah. pretty bare. I don't know if Memorial's games are still packed or not. Are they? We got the but principal. I mean, the principal there. Are you packed? Is the stadium packed? Well, I stand correct. He's like, I, mean, I got I enough kids. I wish all the high schools were packed, yeah, but there's some but high I, schools I, that they're I, pretty. I mean, you, there's very few. People on the other side. I mean, that's sad. Yeah. Cat Maverick Pride. Well, hooray for the Maverick Pride. But the thing is, it, it, that we've got to do something to make something where we'll, it's making it, it's supporting itself. We can't continue to, to support it, or we're going to end up doing the things that we don't want to do, and that's cut programs. And so we need to be real inventive and figure out how to get the families there. Mm -hmm. We will put that on our list. It's like the movie, Fred. 
Yeah, oh, I understand. They make their money on concessions, not on tickets. You're exactly right. And I'm kind of like Vicky, looking at two families, two members of the family working, some working two jobs mm -hmm. in our demographics. Mm -hmm. I think if you take cut the price to a dollar, you wouldn't have any more people. I, I feel oh, the I same. Know. I don't think you would. Yeah. I think the way they work and how they work, I think that would be very difficult to get more people there because of cut prices. Yeah. But you know, that's for a, sure. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just. I mean, we've got to be we've got to be inventive in how we're going to market that program. I mean, we even have that conversation at graduation. How many yeah. of those kids out there don't have parents out there? Yeah. And that's yeah. so sad. Maverick had all theirs. I mean, but it's true. Don't we have that conversation? Yeah, yeah, we say to ourselves, how many of those kids on their special day don't have anybody out there? I agree with you. And some of that's contributed to the fact that a lot of them can't leave work, and I understand that. You and I would both leave work. On that one day of their well, lives. Yeah, well, they may not care then. But the thing is, they ought to be. But we do make it a wonderful day for those graduates Absolutely. with wonderful memories of graduation. And we try to still supply transportation to those in need, don't we? We do. We uh, offer a parent bus. Uh -huh. They get a time and uh -huh. uh, meet at the campus That's and great. go from there yeah. so they can avoid the parking. Sure. Right. Are we still doing the bus signs and stuff like that? We do. Uh, Robert, I don't know how much revenue we get from that, but we do the bus um, marketing through our marketing department. And, of course, um, Very low. we can get you that amount. Mm -hmm. right. Want to advertise? That is one high. You can advertise. No, I don't want to advertise. <laughs> <laughs> Got a market for it. So we will bring you updated information, and in the meantime, if you have questions or suggestions or areas where you'd like us to focus, uh, we will be working on this, and then, of course, ready to present to you again on July 12th. Yeah. Section 9, item number 1, consideration of possible approval of the allowance expenditure authorization, AEA, number 21, for the May Smith Elementary School Replacement Project. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? It's really coming along. Good. Yeah. Looks beautiful. Yes, we toured it two weeks ago, and we'll be huge. touring it again. It's coming along mm -hmm. nicely. They'll be ready. What? What's our moving day? Angie's not here, so I'll look at Kevin again. Uh, I've got furniture coming in July. End of July for furniture. You so going this year? Yes, sir. Fantastic. It is a big it school. Is big. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number two, consideration of possible approval of the track repairs at the Allen Brown Auxiliary Stadium and funding by the 2011 bond contingency pool. So move. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Morgan, a second by Ms. Sullivan. Any discussion? Kevin, when did we last have that repaired? Has it just not held up? I knew that was coming. <laughs> Even though Hope's not here, I, I knew it was coming. I would have repeated that, <laughs> but you were going to say more, so forget it. <laughs> um. They just require ongoing repairs and, and resurfacing from time to time. This isn't a replacement. It's just filling some cracks and then uh, putting another top coat on and restriping. So, but the, it's, it's pretty common um, to have to do that to the tracks. And this is off of the subject, but it's on the same line. How's the South Houston High Track holding up after we had so many issues and repairs on that? I have not heard of any issues at all. So I think it's doing doing well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You might want to stay there for just a minute for my next sure. item. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10, or section 10, is construction update. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Okay. You know, well, the, you know, the only thing we might, one of the things that I've seen a change in is the, uh, and whoever did it, I'll tell them good job. The, uh, I the did it. Huh? I did it. Well. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, 
Miss Morgan, I want to tell you what a great job Thank you did you, on Brian. the uh, scheduling. We're getting now where it's just a, <laughs> a uh, dated a day, a uh, one sheet, a one sheet. This. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I yeah. told her. Way to go, Susan. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Is there any way we can take some of that stuff that's been done, some of those projects that have been done? For a year or two years and move them on a one sheet just to give us an idea they're done instead of making y'all have to do that full blown yep. we sure can yeah just it'd make that <laughs> would be killing so many trees yeah, just reduce it a little we, bit. Can, we can summarize it and reduce yeah. it okay thank you section 11 item number one communications we have none public comments none Appoint board committees. We already have a new sheet. You all have copies of those? Yes. Hey, I'm not on the policy oh. chairman anymore. <laughs> I got it. No, I'm sorry. Committee. Personnel committee chairperson is Vicki Morgan. Other members of that committee is Marshall Kendrick and Nelda Sullivan. Policy and legislative committee chair is Nelda Sullivan, Fred Roberts, and Kenny Fernandez. Facility committee chair is Fred Roberts. Do I get an assistant? Marshall, Marshall Kendrick and Kenny Fernandez. Oh, okay. Naming committee chair Marshall Kendrick and all board members. And budget committee chair is Jack Bailey and all board members. Yeah. Be there next week. And item number four, the next regular board meeting will be Tuesday, July 24th. Anyone? I move that we approve <laughs> Tuesday, July 24th for our next regular scheduled board meeting. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Morgan, a second by Mr. Kendrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And we adjourn at 8.29 p.m. Have a good night. Thank you all.